Good evening, everybody. Thank you very, very much for coming along this evening. Um, and the purpose of this evening is to just give you a little bit of a flavour of um, the work that's been undertaken in the school with regards to looking at the curriculum, but also some of the changes that we're hoping to implement for next session um, for the second years who are going to be going into third year. Just to give you a little bit about my background, um, because I've met a few of you, but I've certainly not met all of you. My previous school, I was the curriculum deputy for a number of years, so the curriculum was my specialty. I was the timetabler for the school as well. Um, and when I came to Hoik, one of the things that struck me was that the third year curriculum was not really meeting the needs of some of the young people that were here. And because of that, I've been in discussion with the departments about how we can look at the curriculum structure for um, the new third year. Um, and obviously, because that is impacting on your young people who are currently in second year, it's really important that I get a chance to explain the, the rationale behind it. And also, if you've got any questions, then um, you'll be able to get an opportunity to ask that this evening. So, our curriculum is about providing a coherent experience for all of the young people here. And the third year curriculum, what we want to do is allow them to, to make some informed choices. Okay. Um, one of the things that it will do um, is give breadth and depth to the learning, which at the moment is not there in third year. Um, we obviously want to maximise all of the young people's um, learning um, attainment so that when they finally leave school, at whatever point, if whether that's at the end of fourth year or whether it is, you know, fifth year or sixth year, that they've got everything that they need to go on to, to have sustained and positive destinations. Particularly in the BGE, obviously, there's a lot of skills development um, and the curriculum that we have here um, as we move forward is obviously going to be developing skills for learning life and work. Now, this is just when you're designing the curriculum, this stuff here comes from um, the Education Scotland um, directive as to how you go about designing your curriculum. I'm not going to waste too much time on this, but basically you have to look at the different curricular areas in the, um, and certainly for the broad general education, we have to ensure that all young people uh, have an experience in all of those curriculum areas. The principles that underpin your curriculum are that you have to have challenge and enjoyment. There's obviously has to be breadth um, and depth, but there's also got to be progression into what comes after the BGE. And there has to be a level of personalization and choice as well. So they're kind of the principles when you're designing your curriculum that we have to take into account. There are obviously entitlements in the broad general education. Um, and what we're talking about tonight is the, the entitlements within the broad general education. And it's clearly stated that the entitlements are that they get a breadth, they get depth and choice, but also that we have to have, obviously, literacy and numeracy covered, but also um, modern languages as well. And there's a real push uh, um, at the moment for ensuring that young people are all studying modern languages in the, the third year um, in the BGE. And obviously the context of the learning, you know, what is the, what does the curriculum look like? Is it allowing all of these things to, um, to take place? Is there a sense of personal achievement? And is there interdisciplinary learning? And for me, that's more about first and second year. And I'll explain a little bit about that later on. And what is the ethos um, behind the curriculum as well? So those are the things when we're planning a curriculum, we have to be taking the, those things into account. Now, the broad general education, as you all probably know by now, because you've got young people who are in second year, is the period of learning from when they start um, at primary school until the end of third year. That is what Education Scotland is deeming broad general education. And within that, all the young people um, have to experience um, experiences and outcomes across the, all of the curriculum areas. Um, so it's not okay to have um, within the broad general education a curricular area at any point that is not covered. Okay? They have to be able to experience all curricular areas up until the end of third year. And ideally, they're looking at, the, they're experiencing that at third level. If they're able, they should be experiencing that at third level. And 
for third year young people, what we would be expecting is that some of them are going on to actually work at fourth level as well. Um, some young people won't progress to fourth level because they might have learning difficulties or learning needs, but the curriculum should be, by the time they're in S3, they should be learning at third level and the most stable young people are getting on to fourth level. So that is the, the highest level you can possibly do. So that's kind of like the difficulty of the work and the depth of understanding that they should be developing. At the moment in Hoik, S1 and S2 are following a common curriculum. And that is very much the same um, in all schools within Scotland. And what we mean by a common curriculum is that they have the broadest possible experience of all of the curricular areas. So um, what that looks like here at the moment is that the young people are getting 12, roughly 12 different subject opportunities to do. So if you're doing science, you're doing um, interdisciplinary <coughs> science, social subjects, you, um, you, you're doing um, interdisciplinary social subjects, but you might have specialities in history, geography and modern studies, but you're, you're learning across each of the different disciplines within the, the curriculum. And that is what's currently in place and we're not looking to change that. Um, all of the young people should be covering all of the E's and O's in all of those areas. And I'm not planning on changing S1 and S2 um, because what's, what's here I think is what is actually appropriate and it's pretty much what um, all young people in schools across Scotland are doing. The difference at the moment is here is that third year looks very much like S1 and S2, so that the young people are still doing 12 subjects. They do get a little bit of specialisation in that, but 12 subjects is quite broad. And my feeling, and certainly the feeling of the staff that I've spoken to in the school, and we've had a big staff consultation, and also feeling that we've got from the young people is that they want to start specialising and narrowing down. And I think that it's no coincidence that some of the, um, the young people that we're finding who are not engaging sometimes is because they have got quite a few subjects that they don't particularly want to continue to study anymore because they have to do 12. And some of the conversations I've had with young people are, well, I don't want to do media, but I had to because that was my last subject. I don't want to do um, chemistry but I had to because I had to do two science subjects. So I've taken all of that information and I've worked with all of the staff in the school and what we've done is we've tried to look at a slightly different um, arrangement for third year, which is what I want to share with you today. All of the young people in S3 are going to have the opportunity to have a, a better choice, okay, and to do a bit more specialisation into their... Um, course choice. Um, however, it is still in the context of the broad general education. Um, and for the subjects that they're picking, we're going to be able to give them a little bit more depth. And what I mean by depth is that they are basically going to be doing a subject for an extra period a week, but that will allow the teachers to get more understanding in the subjects that they're choosing and they'll be able to get to that fourth level, which is not what's happening in third year at the moment in quite a number of subject areas in this school. Oh, sorry. So what I'm saying is that the young people are gonna narrow down their subjects. And what we have come up with um, is a narrowing down to eight subjects, okay? So instead of having this broad uh, range of 12, we're gonna be asking them to narrow down to eight. English and maths are obviously compulsory and core subjects such as PE, faith and philosophy and PSD um, will be compulsory as they were um, this time last year. But instead of the extra range of subjects, we're going to limit the choice to six other subjects. And what that will mean is that for those six subjects, they will be studying them an extra period a week and that will allow the, the depth of knowledge to come in and better prepare the young people for the subjects that they then go on to study at National 5, um, National 4 level in fourth year. So, 
this is probably, and it's not quite finalised yet, so don't look at all of the individual subjects that are on there, but this is pretty much what the course choice um, system is going to look like for your young people. They're going to do maths and English. They're going to have their core French, PE, PSD, Faith and Philosophy as they had this year. But instead, what we're asking them to do, and I don't have a, a, a pen um, sh um, pointer, but in the first section, they are the other <laughs> curricular areas that are in um, Curriculum for Excellence. So you've got Literacy and Numeracy, um, and then you've got your core health and well-being things that we're covering up in the top. And then they are the other curriculum for excellence areas. So what we're seeing is that each child has to do one science that they can choose from there. Each child has to do one social subject. They have to choose one technologies and they have to do one expressive arts. But then they have got a free choice of two other subjects from that section B area there. So for example, if you were me, when I was at that age, I, I was, I'm a scientist, I would have wanted to do two or three sciences, then I would choose one science over here, and then I've got the option of picking my other two sciences from column B. If I am a social subject person, then I have to do a science because we've got to keep the breadth for Curriculum for Excellence, but if you are wanting to do history, you may be thinking about law further down the line, you want to do history, then you can choose your history and then you can perhaps do modern studies or something there um, and you're getting, you to, you know, you're getting your experience there. So do you look at the first choice or mostly? Yeah, we're not, we're not asking. Yeah, I think that this is a system that I operated very similar in my previous school. Not, it's not very often that the young people didn't get every choice that they wanted. What I would say is that there are occasions where the odd one or two combinations don't work. But what we would be saying is that, um, right, you, can have, you, can, you can't have that and that together, but which of those two do you want? You'll definitely get one, but you might not get that odd, unique combination. But at this level, you know, there's n the, I'm not anticipating that there'd be very many young people that wouldn't get all of their choices. There might be the odd combination that a young person would have to go and say, well, you can have that or that, but you can't have them both together. But I think that the way that things have been operating here in the past is that you write down your first, your second, your third and your fourth choice and then you have your backup as well. And I know that some people were getting put into subjects that they didn't want to do. Um, we'll make this work. We're going to have additional staff in next year. Maybe let's talk a little bit about that. Um, but my experience of operating like this is that um, a small handful of young people won't get every combination. And depending upon whether something was popular or not would depend on whether it ran. So, for example, if we put Scottish studies as an option and only four or five young people wanted to do Scottish studies, we might say, do you know what, that's not going to run because we, it's not, you know, it's not, um, um, yeah, viable for, for five young people. But what are your other options? Okay. <laughs> For me, though, the, the, the thing that will be really, really helpful is that if you know um, and, and you're working towards what you're thinking about doing in fourth year, this is much better preparing you for what comes. My sense, I spoke to the, the, the fourth years um, as well when we were, we were thinking about this, and they've said that the jump from third year to fourth year has been really difficult. They've gone from having a subject for two periods a week to having... A sub, that same subject for five periods a week and they're feeling that they weren't adequately prepared you know um, in some ways for national fives and national fours national fives in particular and I think that if you're doing that subject for three periods a week that has to allow a better depth of learning so that you are getting a little bit more time in that subject and you will be better prepared for your national fives so what is the the time allocation no change for maths and English same as this year, four periods for maths and English, as has been the case for the last few years here. Core subjects, there's no changes there 
to the core subjects allocation. The difference is that each subject you select, rather than have them for two periods a week, you'll get them for three periods a week. Um, that is the, the plan. I think it'll better prepare the young people for what comes after that. Um, what my experience is, and this was the system that we operated in my previous school, and the young people were, were pretty well prepared. Um, schools that adopted a, a broader subject base in third year um, in the region that I used to work in all have moved away from that and have come back to something more like this. It's kind of curriculum for excellence was introduced. People went and did very creative things. Some of the young people weren't becoming adequately prepared for the exam years. And those schools that had a broader base have started to come back to, to this type of approach. And we're not the only school in the borders who I have to say have had a broad um, third year and then starting to narrow down. Um, it's, it's something that is, that is happening in a number of schools. Um, and I think that it's because it's the, the transition from S3 into S4 for some young people is proven to be um, a bit more problematic. So I think that this will help them better prepare. Thank you.